What's up friends? Today we're going to be taking a look at something very different. These are the Gyroar Hover Shoes. Now, what is a hover shoe? Well, it's basically a tiny segue for each of your feet. Sounds difficult? Eh, yeah, it probably is. In this video, we're going to be unboxing them and trying them out for the first time. I might even be able to have some of my friends try them out and see what they think as well. So, let's get started. Before we get into this unboxing, we'll only give you a few little tidbits about Jai Roar. Who is Jai Roar? Well, you've most definitely never heard of them, but they are a Chinese company that makes uh, some hoverboards, hover shoes, a couple e-bikes, and a couple scooters. I'm not sure if they're an OEM or if they rebrand things, but this is the only real version of these that I've seen. However, these do look quite similar to the Segway ones, but a few key differences. Now, Gyroar has actually been around for quite a long time, I guess working on stuff behind the scenes, not really 100% sure. According to their website, they're over 12 years old, and their customer service was really great when I talked to the rep who offered to send me these shoes. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen any products from this company, but you might have seen their like headliner, which is the F1 hoverboard, which is a hoverboard that goes way faster than you probably should be going on a hoverboard, but it looks really cool. And uh, I think that's probably one thing that most people might have seen in an ad somewhere. Anyways, let's get on with this unboxing. All right, well, let's get right into this. I don't really expect there to be too much in this box but I'm gonna take it all out and let you guys see. Okay, let's see, we've got a user manual to be expected. We have a letter from Jairur. Thank you for choosing our store, blah, blah, blah. Watch video on Facebook to learn how to use it. Huh. Useful to know. What have we got in here? Looks like we've got a charger with two connectors on it. Quite interesting. Uh, I wonder how the batteries balance charge to each other. It'd be interesting to find out. Got some, it looks like pipe clamps. Quick disconnects. Yeah. I believe, I have watched a couple videos on this. I believe this is for the cross beam that you can put uh, between them to make them into a hoverboard shape rather than individual sides. Another part, this looks like the other half of the quick disconnect, which I guess will connect to the rod that goes across, which is right here. Just a small, feels like aluminum rod threaded at both ends. And then we've got a small wrench. Now underneath, a big piece of foam. And there they are. Ooh, they're bigger than I expected. Wow. Let's go ahead and take these boys out. Wow, these things are honestly quite a bit bigger than I expected. I guess you do have to fit your whole foot on it. Got some grippy rubber on top. Got straps to carry them by. Big old hub motors on there. Very interesting. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and get some B-roll for you guys uh, so you can see them up closer. These definitely look very cool. Um, they're a little more polished than I expected them to be, honestly. Uh, these are only about $230 or something like that on Amazon, so very interesting. Let me get you some close-ups. <laughs> So these are the hover shoes. 
Like I said, they're a little bigger than I expected, but I mean, you know, I guess you do have to fit your entire foot on it. Got a big old hub motor underneath here. I don't know how wide it is. I haven't measured it yet, but it's like it's probably a good bit wider than any kind of hub motor that we would find on an e-skate. And it's got this rubber on it, pretty thin, and it's a weird texture. It feels kind of like oily. So uh, we'll see how that does once they get out on the concrete. Looks like we've got a power button here and then charge port here. And then it's gonna be the same on the other one. Charge port here, power button there. Again, the big hub motor. And these have lights on the ends, which would be in those white areas. And then you got your standing platform on top. So it's not really too much more to go over here. I think uh, we should go outside test them out and see exactly how hard it is to ride. All right, so between the last clip and these upcoming clips, quite a bit of time passed. I waited around for a while trying to figure out the best time to try them out for the first time, and I ended up not being able to coordinate it. So I ended up bringing these hover shoes to an event called Fully Charged San Diego with some of my friends at SD Eskate. And I was able to try them out there for the very first time, as well as give a bunch of others the opportunity to try them as well. So that's what you're going to see coming up here, and I'll do some more voiceover to talk about what I was thinking at the time. This was my first time riding these hover shoes, and as you can see, I used the fence rail to get on them, and I think that's the easiest way to start off with them. Just get up next to something you can hold on to and step onto them. They do a pretty good job of holding their balance in place when you're not on them, so it makes it pretty easy to step on for the first time. As soon as I started going, having never ridden a hoverboard before, I kinda had to get a feel for how the self-balancing works, cause your kind of default is to overcompensate for the direction that you're going and that's where you get the wobbles of the forwards and back on your feet so uh, it's especially prevalent when you hit cracks and stuff like that so this surface that we were testing on uh, this perfectly flat nice and smooth surface is actually probably one of the best surfaces that you could try these on for the first time so I definitely had that going for me um, like I just said there it's easy to get messed up uh, especially the first time when you hit cracks and stuff like that, it will definitely tend to throw you off balance. It's a minute to get used to the balancing. I let a decent number of people try out these skates and some had more trouble with it than others. This particular person had a pretty decent start and uh, managed to go over a pretty challenging obstacle in the first couple seconds. As they go around the corner here, we'll see what happens when you lose your balance and fall off the skates. Pretty graceful recovery and this is pretty typical for the kind of failure modes that you see. Uh, in just a second here, you're gonna see what happens when you overspeed one. Yeah, the one annoying thing that I found is once you put your foot on, it has to stay in that spot, so you really have to set it right. As you can see, by tapping on that skate a little bit too hard, it caused it to go into runaway protection mode, and the beeping you hear is it saying that it needs to be restarted, so you gotta turn it off and then turn it back on again. This guy had a little bit more of a hard time with his startup, but he managed to get it after a couple minutes. 
one thing that I noticed people having an issue with was having their legs spread out too far. So one of the things to concentrate on is to really keep your knees together at, when you're starting. And then once you figure it out, you can start breaking some rules and move your feet apart or closer together. Here we come around to one of our best first timers of the entire time. Eric here from Shred Lights actually decided to start with these using only one, uh, which is definitely a lot harder than using two. So once he hopped on the two, he was able to uh, get the hang of it pretty quickly and uh, really pull off some pretty good stuff for a first day user. Right about there you can hear him hit top speed. If you manage to hit pushback like that and it starts beeping, you can recover by slowing down. And that is exactly what he did. All right, guys, we are back with the Gyroar Hover Shoes. As you can see here on the table, they are a lot of fun. Now, I have to give a huge shout out to Albert from Gyroar for being a really chill person to work with. Uh, all of my email traffic with him was super nice. And um, <laughs> the original time for this collaboration was uh, towards the beginning of this year. So. Big shout out to them for not being annoying, but um, here's the video that you waited so long for. Hopefully you enjoy it. And uh, yeah, so let's talk about my thoughts on these hover shoes. What are the good things? What are the bad things? And what can be improved? Well, first of all, they're incredibly fun. I had quite a few different people try these uh, from both my skate group and random strangers at Fully Charged San Diego. And everyone loves these things. They're always like, where can I get these? Uh, they're super fun, like, I want to take these home. <laughs> and it's interesting because they're really just a toy uh, to me, especially with their low top speed and, uh, you know, limited comfort. But everyone loves them, and me too. They're honestly super fun to play with, and uh, it's just fun to roll around in the parking lot before group rides with them and uh, let other people try them out. And they look really cool with their lights on especially at nighttime when you can see it shining on the ground and stuff like that. So very happy with them overall, but there are a few things that I will have to comment on and let you guys know about. So let's get into the first one. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about is pushback. And uh, if any of you have ridden a one wheel or an EUC, you'll know that there is a certain speed that that device gets to where it will stop you from going further. And some of them are a little bit more lenient than others. Uh, one wheel in particular I know has a pretty strong pushback once it hits its top speed, but for these it is no different. The pushback on these is not super strong, but it's very obvious. Uh, once you hit that top speed, the pushback is pretty severe, and if you keep going past it, uh, they'll just completely cut out. So 
that is one thing to know. Um, these are not very fast. They claim approximately 6.5 miles an hour, I think 10 kilometers an hour, whatever that conversion is, I can't remember, but uh, the top speed is not very high on these. And once you hit it, uh, that's pretty much it. Like you can ride on pushback for a little bit, but if you go way past it, uh, they'll just cut out and you'll probably fall off. So definitely be careful about that. I think um, what they did with the pushback is pretty decent on these. I'm not sure how it could be better, but just be aware that that's there. And again, we're stressing, or I'm going to stress throughout this video that this really is a toy. It's not like an actual commuting device. So, you know, something to take into consideration. Now on the topic of pushback, what happens when you fall off your skates? Well, there is something called runaway recovery and uh, you know, well, that's what I'm calling it. I don't know what they call it, but essentially if your skate flips over or you hit pushback, it will go into recovery mode and it'll just beep loudly at you and it won't do anything until you restart the skate. So let me see if I can make it go into recovery mode here. I think I should be able to do this pretty easily. So there you go. You got a beeping. The wheel is not locked or anything, but you also can't do anything at all until you turn it off and turn it back on again and it'll be back to normal. So um, this is a good feature on one hand and a really annoying feature on the other hand because when you're teaching new riders how to ride these, uh, the chances that they'll fall off and it'll tip over uh, and exceed that speed are pretty high. So one, you don't want your skates running away, which this does a good job of, but two, having to restart them every time is pretty annoying. So I don't know, maybe there could be some compromise there. Um, but yeah, so that is one feature that we've got is the runaway protection. Uh, you can be pretty certain that your skate's not gonna run away without you. Um, if you accidentally, uh, you step off it and you tap it, it could run off in one direction but it's not gonna accelerate more. It'll just kind of roll. So yeah, pretty decent feature, pretty well implemented, but can be annoying. We touched on this briefly, but the top speed of these is fairly low and it's pretty easy to hit pushback, but you know, you have to kind of set your expectations, especially at this price point. Um, I haven't looked at the competitors recently, but I know there are several other people that make similar products to this, and I think some of them might have a higher top speed. I had one user at Fully Charged San Diego who has a different brand of these, and he said that they could go much faster and that there was no kind of crazy pushback like these have. But, you know, again, gotta set your expectations. Um, top speed is not gonna be super high, but it's definitely enough to have some fun in a parking lot or on any other kind of smooth surface. Next up, horizontal stability. Now, you have somewhat limited stability on any kind of device like this, simply because there's not a lot of width to it. Once you start adding a lot of width, you uh, become a lot less maneuverable. So there's a definitely a fine balance here, and I think these do it pretty well. Um, the wheel on here is nice and wide. Looks to be about 75 millimeters or so. Uh, it's about 85 millimeters. 87, 85 millimeters. Um, so it's pretty wide and you have a decent amount of horizontal stability. Uh, so if you try to turn too fast, it'll most of the time be able to keep up with you. But I've had a few instances where, you know, it just falls over and it's not the end of the world. Fortunately, if you just knock your skate over, it doesn't go into recovery mode. So you can just stand it back up and it'll be back to normal. So uh, that's pretty good. But I think horizontal stability could be even a little bit better. But overall, it's definitely usable and uh, you can have some fun with it doing some faster turns. Um, and of course, your ankle stability uh, of the rider will matter to how stable the skate is going to be. Does that make sense? Yeah, so the better you are, the least or less likely you are to have a problem. So for the runtime on these things, um, they claim to have about 40 minutes of runtime. I would say that's pretty accurate. I think you get even more out of it if you're uh, not riding them actively the whole time. Um, so you're definitely able to get a decent amount of fun out of these. They're not gonna really take you super far. I don't really know what the range would be on them. Maybe like two miles or something like that. I mean, it'd be pretty hard to ride these for that long, but uh, 
yeah, the, the run time is pretty decent. And then once you're all out of battery, you have this parallel charger here, which is kind of an interesting technique. I don't really like connecting things in parallel like this. Uh, hopefully there's something in the charger that helps prevent the voltage equalization between the two. Um, but I'm not really sure to be honest. Uh, the output of this charger is 29.4 volts at 1.5 amps. So pretty slow charging, but that's fine for something with a tiny battery like this. And on the side of your skates here, I think you guys can see this. On the side of your skates here, you have a plug and you are able to plug them both in together. Personally, I would recommend plugging the charger into the wall first and then plugging in your, uh, your skates, but it appears that either way will work. So plug them both in and they'll start charging and uh, there's a little light on the charger and it will be green when your charging is done. They take a decent amount of time to charge, but uh, yeah, not too bad overall, pretty simple. All right, so what are my overall thoughts on these things? Honestly, these are probably one of the wackiest and most fun devices that I've had uh, on the channel so far. It's just such a random thing. Uh, I don't think I would ever consider just buying this without trying it first. So I really appreciate Gyro for sending these over. I've had a ton of fun with them and I'm going to continue bringing them to my group rides and uh, letting people try them out because it's just a fun conversation starter. So overall, these things are a lot of fun. And uh, we've just got one last thing to look at before I close this out and give you the uh, information on where to get these. And that is to do a quick tear down of these to make sure there's nothing crazy going on inside. Fortunately, they are actually UL certified, which is kind of rare on some of these uh, eScape products from what I've seen. So let's do a quick tear down of these and see what they look like inside. All right, so hopefully you found that teardown interesting. And uh, here's the final notes. I would recommend if you're looking for a toy like this, just go ahead and buy them. They're pretty great. Uh, the price has gone up a bit since uh, I originally got them. I believe when I got them, they cost around $130, $140. It seems like they're around $200 now. So um, they've gone up a little bit in price. That's understandable due to the electronic situation in the world nowadays but still not a bad deal for a load of fun. Now, where can you get them? So Gyroar has a website and uh, I'll probably put it on the screen here and it'll also be linked in the description, but I believe you can also get them on Amazon. So really the best option here is to check the description because that will have all the latest details as well as my uh, code. I think I should be able to get a discount code, not 100% sure, or at least a link for you guys to use. So uh, go down in the description, check that out, and uh, let me know what you think in the comments. This is a uh, really interesting product, and it's a lot of fun. So let me know what you think. I always love interacting with you guys in the comments. So thanks for watching this video. Stay safe, keep on riding, and peace out.